That's exactly what has happened with the Russian Empire 100 years ago, then with Soviet Union reincarnation of Russian Empire 30 years ago. And we see that Russian Federation, like a continuation of Russian Empire, is moving exactly the same way. So the result will be absolutely the same, I'm sure. One, that's a new Russian attack, uh, barbaric, and uh, unfortunately that's something which happening you know, every almost every day in different parts of Ukraine, and Russia continues to commit these war crimes. Uh, that's the reality. It, it looks as though residential buildings were hit, and there's talk of more than 40 people being killed in this latest attack, which happened in broad daylight in the middle of the day. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely awful, uh, what we see, and... Uh, their result for the moment is uh, 40 wounded and uh, several killed. And uh, there are 12 children who suffered from this attack. That's something which, uh, unfortunately, Russia is doing constantly, attacking absolutely deliberately residential areas. And this Kharkiv region is an area which, at least recently, had been relatively quiet? Uh, you know, I can't say you that it was uh, relatively, yes, because uh, it was better than it was before. But Kharkiv region uh, borders with Russia, and it means that, unfortunately, they are in, in constant danger. That's the reality. Russia has said today that it's brought down five Ukrainian drones which were aimed at Moscow. Um, what do you make of uh, those claims? I can tell you that, at first, I'm not a military person and I'm, uh, I don't have a responsibility to, to command these things. I think that Ukraine has all the right to attack any objects in Russian territory because they are constantly doing it against our country for all these 16 months, more than 16 months. Uh, so we have all the right to do this. Was it Ukraine or not? Uh, I can't tell you because I just am not a person who should uh, take responsibility or not. But in any way, Ukraine, again, it has all the right to defend itself with all means possible. And maybe that's the only way to finish this war, to show Russians that it's not some, you know, awful things happening in some faraway places. But if they feel that the war is knocking at their door, maybe they will change their attitude to this war. President Putin has been uh, speaking today at this uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit, uh, meeting uh, leaders uh, from India, from China. He is saying that uh, essentially the Russian economy, the Russian country is doing quite well despite the sanctions, that they found ways around this through trade with countries like China. Like China. How concerned are you that Russia is still managing to maintain its, its economic strength, which, of course, it needs to continue to pursue the war, um, despite the sanctions against the country? Definitely. That's a very big challenge, that Russia can still avoid the sanctions through cooperation with the third countries. And that's something which should be fixed. Uh, and those who are responsible for this should pay their price, and that should be stopped. Because if Russia uh, will continue you know, to receive everything they really need in order to continue this war, this war will be endless. It's already clear that Ukraine would not fail. It's already clear that Ukraine would, will not lose. But the question is, when and, and how quickly uh, and how Ukraine will win, because that's the only way to the peace on the continent, to restore in territorial integrity of Ukraine, sovereignty of Ukraine. Would you like to see countries like India that was involved in this dialogue today do more to condemn Russia's uh, military offensive and indeed to take its own economic sanctions against Russia? Absolutely. And not just India, but India is a good example because India is the biggest democracy in the world. And I can't understand why India is playing games with these dictatorships. 
why India is in this organization with the dictators, with Putin, with now Iran and his absolutely awful Iranian regime. And uh, now they invite the Belarus dictator Lukashenko, which is a Putin's puppet. And I can't understand what India is doing there. President Putin, of course, uh, has seen off this challenge from the Wagner leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, It did appear to be a direct challenge to his leadership, but he appears to be pressing on with the war in Ukraine. Um, What difference do you think that whole episode has made? I mean, are those Wagner forces still operating in parts of Ukraine or have they withdrawn as a result? They were not operating already for some time before this mutiny and this attempt of coup. coup. Uh, But uh, uh, today, I think that uh, we don't see like a big consequences of this on the how the war is continuing because it was very quick. Russia was just one step from complete collapse, but they stopped the one step before. But what we saw from all what had happened is that Russia is extremely fragile and Putin's regime is very weak. And uh, no difference was what people uh, around Russia uh, think. But I'm sure that sooner or later Putin's regime will fail. And with this regime, the whole Russian Federation will fail. That's exactly what had happened with the Russian Empire 100 years ago then with Soviet Union reincarnation of Russian Empire 30 years ago. And we see that Russian Federation, like a continuation of Russian Empire, is moving exactly the same way. So the result will be absolutely the same, I'm sure. And yet at the moment, it doesn't seem as though the renewed offensive by Ukrainian forces has made any significant progress in terms of trying to take back some of that territory which is occupied by Russian forces. Yeah, that's true. And uh, because what we see with the Ukrainian counteroffensive is uh, like a planetary scale experience uh, and kind of like something which was never seen before. If you will take the all uh, military Uh, theory of uh, NATO countries, of Russia, all of this is based on air superiority. But Ukraine is in counteroffensive without any air superiority. And still we have some successes. So even these successes are quite unbelievable that we have them. But if we really want to see the Ukrainian success, we need uh, long-range missiles. And I want to appreciate and to thank UK people and UK government for a long-range missile storm shadow which we received. But we're still waiting for attacks from the United States, by the way. Yeah, happy Independence Day to all Americans. We're still waiting for F-16s. We are waiting for military helicopters and other things. And without all this weaponry, it will be extremely difficult for us to have a real big success. Russia was for one year digging in the ground, entrenching, preparing for defense, and now they are really prepared. So despite all those pledges that you have received from uh, NATO allies, from the United States and so on, you're saying that, that you still haven't received enough of the military hardware, the equipments, the planes and the missiles which have been promised? From the point of view of Air Force, we have received nothing. From well, th- that, of that, of course, of was not a pledge that was ever agreed, was it? Yeah, it wasn't, but that's the question. Why not? Uh, like, from the beginning, the only javelins and stingers were promised. Then it was okay, Horvitzers. Then okay, Heimarses. Then okay, Petros. Then okay, Tanks. But each time, it took months to make these decisions. And during these months, Russia was not just sitting and waiting. They were preparing. And, and that is a very, very big risk uh, and challenge. Because if we really want to finish this war, we need not to chase after Putin, but we need to go, go ahead of him. Because I've seen several times during the last 16 months when Ukraine had all chances to finish the war, but we just didn't have with what to do it. Then they, this weapon was given to us, but it was too late.
So we've got this big NATO summit happening uh, in a week or so. How significant is that? And what would you like NATO to be saying, to be agreeing at that big NATO meeting? Yeah, that is a crucial. And uh, we, what we need is very clear. We need official invitation for Ukraine to become member of NATO. Yes, that could happen when the security situation will allow this. That's clear. So we can say that should happen after the uh, war, maybe. But it should be said officially that Ukraine is invited and Ukraine will be a member of NATO immediately after the war will be finished. Because that's the only way to have security in Europe. Uh, Europe tried to have security in other way, uh, having Ukraine as a buffer between uh, European Union, NATO countries and Russia. And we just need to, to say truth. This just doesn't work. 